Hey everybody, ready for a Devo? We're gonna have a great time. We're in the book of 1 John. We're going over chapter three and four today. Hope you've been having a great time in your devotional daily growth book. Um, we're gonna be starting from, because this week we actually start in the last couple of verses of 1 John 2. So we're gonna start from there, go into 1 John 3 and then verse four, and then uh, chapter four. Remember, these are overviews. Um, and so we're not giving every single revelation, trusting the Holy Spirit will do that in you. Let's invite the Holy Spirit as the teacher to teach us today. Holy Ghost, we give you praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit, you're the teacher of your word. Lord, we just pause thanking you that you'll show us and tell us exactly what you want us to know out of these chapters. Illuminate it for us. Give us the revelation we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so starting at verse 24, we're going to be starting of chapter 2. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and the Son in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, even eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. So just pause real quick. Paul was making it clear that you have to choose to allow the things of the gospel, the things that Jesus has told you, to remain in you. The reason why they need to remain in you is because it's by his word that he keeps you. And when I say keeps you, keeps you in the faith, keeps you in the walk with God. The word of God that is in you keeps you pressing through when hard times come. The word of God that is in you keeps you fighting through fights that the enemy is trying to put up against you, but you defeat them because of the word of God that he's given in you. The word that you are reading, the word that you're studying, God takes those words and he uses them. He brings them up in your spirit at the times when you need them. So if you don't have any word in you at the time a fight happens, you're left without a weapon. So many times fights or temptations or things will come and we can't fight them because we don't already have a word in us. But it's also saying that uh, remain in him so the word actually helps you remain in him remember jesus said this when he came down he said to his disciples he said to those who are listening he said those who endure to the end will be saved he didn't say those who say one day that they're going to serve me and then do whatever they want after that he says those who endure through all of life till the end will be saved you see it's not just saying a prayer is coming up and confessing and believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Does that mean you'll be saved? Absolutely. That's what the Bible says. However, you have to remain in him. That's what he just said. Remain in him. You need to endure the hardships of life. The Bible says that Paul says, as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, we're now fighting. We're now going through all these things with the faith. Remember, faith is the victory that we have that overcomes the world. Our hope in Jesus overcomes anything that comes against us. We'll notice here in 1 John 4 in a little bit famous scripture, greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world. So you have everything that you need in order to conquer everything that comes against you, but you have to choose to remain. God gives you all the tools, but it doesn't mean you're using them. He gives you the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't mean you're taking advantage of that. He gives you his word. Are you reading it? He gives you his word. Are you using it against the enemy? He gives you the things you need in order to remain. He gives you the things you need in order to endure, but you have to take action and actually utilize those things. So as we continue here, verse 27, as for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit just as it has taught you remain in him so first thing that you notice there is there's a real anointing and there's a counterfeit anointing there's an anointing that supposedly is real but it gets no benefits it gets no results it doesn't break the yoke of bondage but it seems like it's real it seems you can look and you be like, man that it looks like it has all the outside appearances but that's why matthew 7 is there where it said that many will say in my name he cast out devils they prophesy, but he said, I never knew you. So there are people that have a counterfeit anointing. Maybe even some results are happening, but it's demonic. You know, this is something really consider. You want to make sure your spirit is at peace with the things that you're seeing and listening to. That's why the word of God is our fallback. Everything you run through the word of God and you'll always be safe. Verse 28, and now dear children, continue in him. So now we have, you know, in the first verses we read, you got to let the word stay in you so that you remain the, the anointing makes sure it remains in you. Now you got to continue in him. Are you seeing these words? It's really up to you. You're making these choices to stay in this place. 
chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to go through some highlights now, some good thoughts. 3, verse 1. How great is the love of the Father that He's lavished on us, that we should be children of God, and that is what we are. Wow. The love of God. Isn't He so great that He's loved you so much that He didn't just save you, He changed your entire family. Maybe you were born to your mother and father. Maybe they're the ones who raised you. But you know it's really God whose hand has been on your life. The Father takes ownership of you. When you received Him, you confessed your sins, the blood of Jesus cleansed you, He made you a part of His family. You're not an heir just of the Tates or of whatever your last name is, the Ramones or, you know, the Garcias. You're not, you're not just an heir of that anymore. You're an heir of God. You get His stuff. The Father has laid aside an inheritance for you to have. Isn't that just amazing news? When's the last time you thought about that? You just sat down, got quiet, put some worship music on, and just started thanking Him that you are adopted, that you belong somewhere, that you're not just an orphan. And even if you had parents, maybe you weren't completely raised by them. Maybe your dad wasn't there, your mom, I don't know. But God says, you got a family now. That's what you are. You're a child of God. Don't be settling for the devil messing with your life and doing things. He doesn't have any right. You're a child of God. Don't be settling for poverty. He doesn't have any right. You're a child of God. Don't be settling for destitution and depression and anxiety. It doesn't have a right. You're a child of God. See what I'm saying? This is good stuff. Verse 4 of chapter 3. Everyone who sins breaks the law. Sin, in fact, is lawlessness. Powerful. But you know that he appeared, Jesus, so that he might take away your sins. And in him there's no sins. So anyone who lives in him, verse 6, keeps on, who does not live in him, keeps on sinning. No one who continues in sin has either seen him or know him. So let's just get this real clear. In God there's no sin. Number two, Jesus came to take away your sin. He became sin on the cross so that now he could take away yours. That when you repent... You now have the blood that he shed by becoming your sin. Now you can have the sin taken away because Jesus took it. Hallelujah. But anyone who continues sinning, it says, neither has seen him or know him. So what does that mean? Does that mean, oh, Gavin, you know, I cussed um, last week. And, you know, I did that years ago, and I guess I'm still continuing it, so I'm not saved. That's not what it's saying. That's not what it's saying. It's not saying that anyone who sins now... It doesn't know him. Listen, being saved, you're still going to sin, but you're going to sin less. You're not sinless, but you will sin less. And matter of fact, the areas that you're bound on, God's saying you have another option now. You don't have to stay bound. You don't have to stay in that horrible habit. You don't have to stay in the sinful cycles. You see, there's a difference between I sinned, I cussed, Lord God, please forgive me. I flipped off that person on the highway. Oh, Lord Jesus, please just forgive me. There's a difference between that and someone who lives with that. And here's the difference. The person who sins and then repents and truly changes. The person who sins doesn't believe there's anything wrong with it, doesn't believe that he needs to repent, just accepts it for who he is, says, man, I've tried too many times. I've said I'm sorry too many times. I'm just sorry of doing that. God accepts me as the way I am. This is how he made me. Da, 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 da. That's different. That's not acceptable. You recognize sin, you call evil evil, you call good good. Verse 8, he who does what is right, who is, who, he who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. The reason Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil, not promote them. That's why Jesus doesn't give you sickness. He destroyed it. Jesus doesn't give you depression. That's from the devil. That's a work of the devil. He destroys it. Jesus doesn't make you want to commit suicide. That's a work of the devil. He destroys it. Get it clear who does what. Where is that coming from? Make sure you know who the sender is. Because if it's not the right sender, Jesus, you can return to sender. <laughs> That's a different message. Uh, verse 11. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Jesus is saying, now that I have this love for you, so loving that I've now made you my children, would you love one another? Verse 13 continues and said, Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. Because this love that's going to come out of you, this love for one another, you're going to love people even when they hate you. You're going to love people when they despise you, when they talk bad about you, because you're my children. You, you're not like the world. You're not going to pay back people. You're going to love them in spite of what they do to you. So he says, the world's going to hate you because of this. Verse 15, anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. 
and you know that no murderer has eternal life. So he says, don't get involved with this hate stuff. Don't you, as my children, get involved with hate because when you hate, you've actually already murdered the person in your heart. Hate is as murder to God. Hating somebody is the same as murdering them to God, and murderers do not go to heaven. Uh, Gavin, what do you mean? They don't go, I, I murdered somebody. I repented, though. That's right. I'm not talking about somebody who repented of sin. Remember, we're not talking about people. You could do anything in your past. There might be all kinds of stuff. You're listening to it. You get a man if you only knew. Right? There's a story you got, but the blood of Jesus comes and gives you a brand new story because you repented. I'm not talking. He's not talking about those people. He's talking about someone who lives in hate, doesn't repent of hate, doesn't believe there's anything wrong with hate, hates them because of the color of their skin, hates somebody because of their status in life, hates somebody because of the social class they're from, hates them because they're poor, hates them because they're rich, hates them because they're smart, hates them because they're dumb, whatever. Any kind of hatred the Bible condemns and says it is as of murder. You cannot hate someone and go to heaven. Just know that. Verse 16, this is how we know that what he loves is Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers because he did it for you. We can do it for each other. If anyone has material possessions and sees that he can love but has no pity and doesn't give him to the brother who's in need, what love is there? Dear children, don't just, uh, dear children, let us love not just with words only but in actions. Okay, don't look at somebody who's poor and has nothing and just try to preach at them. Give them something and preach to them. If they're cold, give them a blanket. If they're hungry, give them some food. Let's be practical in our love, not just with our words. Amen. Let's go to chapter four now. A couple highlights I want to send from this. This is tremendous chapters, right? A couple more highlights. Verse one of chapter four. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. This is so important, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone into the world. Don't just believe it because someone says it. It all comes back to the Word. Can you find it in the Word of God? Can you find it in the Word of God? They said it. They said it with a lot of unction. They said it with a lot of authority, seemingly. They said it with a lot of conviction. They said it loud. That doesn't matter. Can you find it in the Word? Does the word confirm what has been said? The word will protect you from any false prophets. Don't worry about if you're being led astray right now. My question is this. Do you read the word daily? Do you know God's word? Do you know the Old Testament? Do you know the New Testament? Do you know what he says? Because if you do, you're not going to be led astray. Can I just tell you to foolproof yourself to make sure you're safe from all false prophets? Never were you going to be deceived. You know how? If you're in the word all the time, if you know the word, the word will keep you safe. It will tell you when something's wrong. It will tell you when something's right. But if you're not in the word, you are prey for the enemy. Can I say that again? If you're not in the word daily, you are prey for the enemy. Take this serious. The word of God is your protection. It lets you know what's right and wrong, but you will not be able to tell if something is right or wrong if you're not in the word. The word will highlight in your spirit. That's not right. That's not wrong. But if it's not there, you don't got anything. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. Demons will not acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh. They don't want to do it. They're not spirits that are from God. Anyone who does not, verse 3, acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. That's that spirit. Which you have heard is coming and even is now already in the world. Now, John is writing this way back there. If it was already there, and then it's now. The spirit of the Antichrist is already here. That's what he's saying. That spirit of the Antichrist is already here. Maybe the Antichrist in physical form that Revelation talks about is not already here. But the spirit of the Antichrist, that one that does not acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, it will not acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh. See, that's a big difference between religions. There's so many religions that believe he was a good man, but they will not say he's of the Son of God. That's the Antichrist spirit. There are religions that believe that he was a prophet, even great, but not that he came in the flesh and died for our sins. That's how you can tell. It's an Antichrist spirit. These, verse 5, are from the world, and therefore they speak from the viewpoint of the world. Verse 4, here's the famous thing. Don't be afraid, because if you're in the Word, this is what your promise is. You are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Praise God. Just thank him for that. The one who is in you is greater than the one who's going to try to deceive you, 
These false prophets won't have a part of your life. You're not going to fall for any of this because he's in you, because you put his word in you. Last couple things here. Verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God. So we're going back to love now because God is love. God is love. He doesn't try to love. He doesn't know how to love. He is love. Whoa. God and love are synonymous. They are the same. Love is a person. Think about that. Love is a person. Love is God. God is love. And we're not talking about love that you want to define it as. No, no, no. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. You'll find what love is. Don't try to define love the way that you want love to sound. Well, love is just the emotional attachment I have to whatever sex. Uh -uh, that's not love. Love is the way the Bible defines love. Don't define love yourself. Don't let movies define love. Don't let Hollywood define love. Don't let your girlfriend or boyfriend define love. Don't let any speaker, any show, any radio, nothing. Podcast, don't let anything define love to you. Don't even let your parents define love. The Bible defines love. Amen. Verse 8. Whoever does not love is not, does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love. You ready? This is part of what love is. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. So love is sacrifice. Part of love is sacrifice. Jesus showed the ultimate sacrifice. Verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. Do you know how much God loves you? And two, do you rely on that love? You know, people are going to let you down. Sometimes people love you. Sometimes they don't. You break up with people you don't break up. Even when you're married, you don't feel like you like that person all the time. <laughs> I mean, you love them, but your love is still incomplete. Your love is very, very shallow. Your love, a lot of times, if we were honest, is based on how people treat you good or they don't. It's based on how you feel that day. God does not abide like us. He loves us. Verse 16 says, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Do you rely on that love? Do you rely on that, knowing that that love is sustainable? That love never changes. That love is a rock you can fall onto. Hallelujah. In this way, verse 17, powerful, and this is our last uh, point. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. Another one says, as he is, so are we in this world. Because of the love of God, what he did for us on the cross, as he is, so are we, is, he presently is. Where is Jesus right now? He's at the right hand of the throne of God. What do you mean? I thought he's in my heart. Yes, yes, please understand. The physical form of Jesus, the Bible said that he told his disciples, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And then it said the physical form of Jesus ascended. And he went and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus' physical form is in heaven. His spirit his spirit. So wait a minute. Jesus can be one place and his spirit can be somewhere else. Yes. Remember, there's multiple parts. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But aren't they all God? Yes. How about you? You're made up of three parts. Your spirit, your soul, your body. So your body is different than your soul. Your mind, will, and emotions is different than your spirit. Your wisdom, your intuition, your communion. Right? So listen, y'all. Jesus is now, as he is in heaven, so are you right now. Jesus is in a certain condition in heaven right now. He said because of the love of God and because of what Jesus did on the cross, he made that condition available to you. Your body, your emotions, your mind could all be in the same condition as Jesus is right now. Hallelujah. Receive it today. Believe it in faith. God bless you guys. This has been an incredible time. Hope you got a lot from these couple of chapters. Um, we'll be continuing soon. Love you. Stay consistent. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and define these words to you. God bless. Bye-bye.